So now we move to this uh, important uh, uh, tool in, in, uh, in regularity structures, which, as I said, is a version of, of the previous uh, results, the Sorin lemma, in, uh, um, in higher dimension. So what, the, the result uh, uh, which I discussed is really restricted to uh, one dimension, so these delta operators, et cetera, uh, I mean, you, maybe you, you can define the, the delta operators, et cetera, but the, 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 the kind of theorem that you, you want to have uh, is, is not, I mean, is more complicated. So this is what uh, Martin did uh, in, uh, his paper in, in 2014. So, in fact, uh, so this talk, this lecture, is based on, on, a, on a paper, uh, which you, you, you can find uh, in this uh, journal, uh, which uh, so I, I wrote with Francesco Caravenna, and so the title is High Res Reconstruction Theorem Without Regularity Structures. Okay, so uh, this, in this paper we extracted, so this, single uh, result from a larger theory. And uh, uh, so we tried to, in a sense, we wanted to un understand it uh, and uh, present it in a, in a simpler uh, form. And the, it turns out that we found a, a more general, actually, version. Uh, and that uh, we could uh, state it and prove it without mentioning a relative structure. So in fact, um, as far as possible, I will uh, <laughs> keep away from regulatory structures and uh, uh, mm, point to, to that when, when it is useful or, or needed. Okay. Uh, so even the journal, this is a, so this is a European Mathematical Society survey, so it's a very good uh, uh, series of uh, surveys, but our paper is a kind of a, a hybrid uh, between a research paper and, and, a, and, a, and a actual survey, because we, we have, in a sense, new notions, new, new, new proofs, new, new results, uh, although the main statement is, is clearly inspired uh, from uh, uh, Hire's work. Okay, so you, you will see what this is about. So here we have to introduce uh, in a more precise way uh, distributions uh, or generalized functions. So um, this is D prime. Now D prime, so the prime suggests that this is the dual space of, of D, of RD, uh, which is uh, the set, so the space of C infinity functions with compact support or, or on RD. A distribution on Rd is a linear function T on this space, such that for every compact set, uh, there is some integer which de can depend on the compact, such that uh, T is continuous in a CR uh, uh, norm. Okay, so this is a standard, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's written here, okay, it's the supreme norm of the first uh, k uh, derivatives uh, of, of test function phi for every phi uh, which is uh, which has support uh, in uh, in k and which is uh, infinity. Okay, so throughout the course, the, the course actually, uh, this symbol means that uh, there is some universal constant such that etc. Okay, so this is a, a distribution. Now every locally integrable, in particular, continuous function uh, phi defines a distribution by integration. A uh, famous example uh, is the Dirac measure um, from quantum mechanics, uh, which is just the evaluation at, at the point. So it's a measure, in fact. Uh, And uh, so you, you can have, of course, many, many generalizations of, of this. You can always differentiate uh, a distribution just by 
um, uh, if you want formally integrating integrate in by parts and uh, moving the derivatives to the test function. So derivatives are uh, well defined for distribution. You remember I said at the beginning G was a continuous function. Uh, in particular, then it was a distribution and its derivative was maybe not a function, but it was a distribution. So I, I was already applying this um, philosophy. Now, so distributions, of course, are a linear space. This is very easy. Uh, it is possible to multiply a distribution, T, and the test function, uh, phi. So actually, no, phi need not be a compact support. It is enough that it is in C infinity. Because uh, whenever, ah, sorry, here I forgot the C. Sorry about that. So this is a misprint. Uh, so this is a typo. So you 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 need psi to be uh, compactly supported and C infinity, and then uh, you define phi dot t applied to psi or t dot phi applied to psi as t applied to phi multiplied by psi. However, if t and t prime are both distributions, so in, there is no canonical way of defining their their product. So this is uh, the the a very well-known problem in, in, in PDEs uh, or in functional analysis. Uh, so Ilya <laughs> discussed this uh, before uh, in, in several precise uh, uh, examples. Uh, you may use some form of re regularization of one of, of them or, or of both, and then try to remove the regularization, but the limit, so the result uh, would certainly depend on how you regularize and uh, you wouldn't have a unique uh, or canonical uh, result, or maybe you would have no result uh, at all. So, for example, as far as I know, there is no uh, setting, there is no theory where you can uh, define in a sensible way uh, the square of the Dirac function. Okay. okay, so again, you can make some operations on, on distributions, but products are very uh, delicate, uh, so. Now, what is the main question behind the reconstruction theorem? So for every point of your RD space, so again, I insist uh, um, the semi lemma was D equal to one, now we include D equal to one, but we suppose that D in general is actually two or, or more. So for every X in RD, we fix a distribution Fx Okay, so in D prime, we call Fx a germ. Uh, again, so this is actually, maybe I can write this immediately. In, in one dimension, you would suppose that Fs of, of, of T, okay, okay uh, is the derivative of As with respect to T, okay? Uh, I'm writing of t as if this was a um, function, but of course it is a distribution. But so this is the uh, the relation that you can have in mind. And uh, so actually, uh, I'm not sure that in the end germ was really a good uh, um, term for for that. So Sylvie, Misha criticized us uh, for that, but uh, in a sense, uh, uh, the word germ was used for A, that we used for, okay, sorry about that. Sometimes even wrong wrong choices uh, uh, so become habit and then you, 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 you just skip them. So um, can you find a, a distribution F in D prime? which is locally well approximated by uh, this germ uh, Fx. Okay? So again, this uh, expression, uh, so local approximation was used by, by Ilya. So here I can try to make this more, more precise for, for, for you and, and, and for him. Uh, so let, let's give a, a very classical example, which is Taylor expansion. 
Uh, now you fix f, which is a C infinity function, you fix gamma, which is a positive uh, exponent, and you write this uh, germ, the space, uh, so the base point uh, x uh, uh, is fixed, and y is somewhat your, your variable. Uh, you write the Taylor expansion up to level gamma excluded, and uh, uh, you have these monomials, uh, okay, y minus x to the k, Okay, and then the, the Taylor uh, theorem tells you that uh, the function small f at y minus the Taylor, the Taylor polynomial is small, okay, at level gamma when y is close to x. So you, you see a little bit already the, the relation with the, 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 the semi lemma. You want a remainder to, to be small. Um, uniformly for every x and y on compact sets of, of RB. So this is a, clearly a situation where f is locally well approximated by the germ fx, okay? So you, around the point uh, x, uh, this is very close to, to, to the value of your global function uh, f, small f, right? In a sense, we want to generalize this to situations where both small f and, and capital F can be distributions with respect to y. Okay, uh, in order to make this more precise, we need a, a fundamental tool, which is scaling. Now, you fix a test function phi, uh, lambda positive, y in Rd, and you define the scaled uh, test function, phi lambda y at w, which is just this, so w minus y over lambda uh, inside phi, and then you define by lambda to the d. So this is a new test function. Then the local approximation property, which we stated uh, in the previous slide, implies this. Okay, actually, I, I will prove this uh, in one of the next slides, it's, it's a very simple thing. Okay, so for any phi in D, again, there is some uh, uniformity, maybe I will stop mentioning this every time. Uh, a bit like what we said in the first uh, lecture, what is nice here is that um, this looks like a concept which does not need the uh, uh, continuity of regularity of, of uh, small f and capital F. So this uh, looks like a, a notion which can hold, which can make sense also for distribution, okay? Because you are, you are, you are testing a distribution on, on a test function and you, you require a, a behavior uh, when lambda goes, goes to zero. And remember gamma until now was supposed to be positive, so this should be small when lambda is small, okay? And again, that means that you are restricting around the, the base point Y, so this really look, looks like uh, this. This is a kind of weak version uh, of this, okay? So now, in fact, uh, another simple formula in this context, which I'm going to at least uh, quickly, is the following. So if you consider the difference between the two Taylor expansions based at Z or Y, and you test, in this case, it means you integrate against the test function based at Y, then you have this inequality, uh, which is very simple. Um, and this property is called uh, coherence. So let, let me show a proof, uh, uh, a quick proof of that, just to, to see where that comes from. So look at this. So when, again, remember F is C infinity, so you can take as many derivatives uh, as you want. So here you take the kth derivative of F at Y, and you Taylor expand this around Z, up to level gamma minus uh, so the, here everything is vectorial, so k is in nd, and uh, this is the sum of the absolute, so absolute value of k is, uh, is the sum of, 
of the components of, of K, okay? So here you are Taylor expanding the derivative of F around Z, and you have a remainder, which I call RK, which has this uh, nice uh, behavior. And then, so you start from uh, the uh, Taylor expansion around Y of small f, you have the derivative, the kth derivative of f, you, you replace this by this expression, and you get uh, that. And then uh, with, with uh, some uh, manipulation uh, based on the um, Newton theorem, uh, binomial theorem, you, you, you reach uh, this uh, conclusion. Okay, so you, the important uh, information is that RK has this behavior. And then uh, you have obtained uh, that FZ of W minus FY of W is minus that. And therefore you can estimate this by this. And you, you apply again this uh, formula, this inequality, and you obtain uh, uh, Okay, that's it. it's written here, right? So now, if you integr if you multiply by, uh, it should be here. Now, if you multiply by phi la lambda y of w, uh, you have this. But now, w minus y is less than lambda, and then you you get uh, you get this, okay? Up to some universal constant. So you have obtained this property for the germ of the uh, Taylor expand Taylor polynomials up to level gamma. So remember the gamma was the level where you stop your, your monomials. Uh, you have this. Okay. Uh, actually, yeah. If you want to prove uh, the, that other formula, it's very simple because the f, small f minus capital F is just the remainder, which is uh, bounded by W small y to the gamma, and over the, the ball, this is just lambda to the gamma uh, times uh, lambda to the D, okay, so you, you get this. So in the case of Taylor expansions, we, which we, we all know uh, well, uh, you have two, formulae which are simple and, uh, and, uh, and nice. Uh, okay, but so can we generalize this to a situation where we have less regularity? Okay, so in fact, suppose that now capital F here is, is a distribution uh, at Z and at Y. So for example, the one in Y if lambda goes to zero, so the scaling is converged to some sort of uh, Dirac uh, mass at, at y. So you are trying to compute the value of the distribution for w equal to y, but this is not possible. So you expect that there is some divergence when lambda goes to zero. So this is not, not compatible with the formula which is there. So for distribution, you, you need to allow some divergence on, on the right-hand side as lambda goes to zero. But, okay, you, you, you impose that such divergence is somewhat controlled. So this is at least one possible notion that I, I propose to you. So you allow la lambda, so a, a factor which is lambda to the alpha with alpha possibly uh, negative, which then would would diverge as lambda goes to zero, but then you improve your estimate uh, on the other uh, factor because you have gamma minus alpha, so minus alpha becomes uh, uh, greater or equal than zero. Okay, so you have a better control on, on, the, on the second uh, uh, factor. Okay, so we, we say, so this is a notion which we introduced in the paper with, with Francesco, that a germ is coherent if it satisfies uh, this bound, uniformly, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so for, for the moment, this may look a bit uh, mysterious, 
um, but uh, I will tell you why this is uh, interesting. So at least I think the motivation uh, from Taylor expansion is rather convincing. So Taylor expansions satisfy this with alpha equal to zero and gamma equal to the, the level of the, of the expansion. So IRS reconstruction theorem without regular structures is the following. Uh, suppose that you have a, a gerb and the parameters gamma positive, alpha less or equal than zero. You have a, a single phi test function uh, with non-zero integral and you have this coherence uh, condition which we have discussed. Okay. Then there exists the result, a unique distribution which we call the reconstruction of F, such that uh, Rf minus Fx tested on, on the scaled version of Psi uh, centered at X is bounded by lambda to the gamma uniformly for X in contact X, etc. and Psi um, in, in the ball zero one uh, with the CR uh, norm bounded by one with a fixed, uh, so there is a, uh, how is this called? The, um, I don't remember how this is called. So the, the, the continuity of the distribution is in the sense of CR here on, on, on each uh, compact. So again, uh, for Taylor expansions, so F was the Taylor polynomial and uh, small f uh, is the reconstruction. Okay. But this is a much more general statement. Um, and uh, I stress, so the fact that here we have existence and uniqueness of uh, such, uh, such an object. Um, yeah. Okay, some, some comments, then maybe, maybe I can ask you, is there any question about that? Yes? A question, but so in this statement, the phi is just one phi, right? But the statement you, you get is yeah. true for each of the, can exactly. you, are you going to explain why that suffices in the, um, the intuition? Is no, so, so this, this is part of the proof, so, uh, yeah, Okay, let's see, because I have a slide uh, on, on the sketch of the proof, let's see what I wrote on in the slide and then I can comment. But indeed, you, you will construct an, a, an approximation of RF, uh, which is based on this single phi, and then you prove uh, the, the formula for any test function uh, psi. So uh, indeed, this is, uh, okay, this is one of the details which is new in our result with respect to what Martin wrote, uh, that this coherence condition is uh, based on a, on a single uh, phi. Okay. It is, uh, um, no. Uh, Maybe I didn't understand correctly, but the phi you say in this statement is really fixed. I mean, it's just a no. very particular phi, or it's just you fix no, no. one phi? For every germ, you just uh, assume that there is one phi, any phi? Any phi, okay. No, exactly, no, exactly, no, no, no. In fact, you construct a sort of a discrete semigroup, but you don't need the, the fact that it is a precisely a semigroup. Uh, yeah. Indeed, so the approach by uh, Otto and Weber would use a specific phi with a good property, yes. Uh, but they also noticed that in a sense, it was enough to have a, a, a property with one phi, although, yeah, yes. There was another, no. Okay, so a few comments. So this result was stated and proved by Martin, but 
for a subclass of germs related to reg regularity structures. So uh, in this sense, our statement is, is more general because we, we don't mention regularity structures, but we can uh, re, re prove his result uh, by restricting to a, a certain set and he used wavelets, but okay, that's uh, uh, maybe our approach is in this sense more elementary because we don't need to define wavelets, but okay. Then uh, I may also mention uh, uh, Otto Weber uh, who proposed an approach based uh, on a semi-group this corresponds to a special choice of the test functions phi and psi. See also, uh, so there is a, a survey by Bayel uh, and Oshino uh, that you can also uh, uh, check, uh, read. Now, uh, from a pedagogical point of view, uh, if, you, if you take uh, Martin's paper, which it's uh, very long, of course, so, uh, the, the, the reconstruction theorem appears in section three, which means maybe page uh, 60s, I don't remember. Um, because he needs to introduce regularity structures, model, uh, model distributions, uh, quite a few notions. So in this way, in, in, in a, so a, f a few slides and uh, uh, less than uh, 30 minutes, I, I arrived at the, the statement. And this result actually can be seen as a generation of the semi lemma in a rough path. Uh, so uh, now I don't remember, we'll see later in my slides how, how well did I explain this? I don't know. Uh, the construction is local, so uh, the constants, so uh, I'm sorry, I go back, so here you have constants, okay, here you have constants, which are not uh, written explicitly, they can all depend uh, on the uh, compact, but even alpha can depend on the compact, so gamma should better be fixed. Um, Actually, we also cover the case gamma less or equal than zero, but I will come back to this uh, later. So again, this reconstruction theorem allows you to construct, <laughs> to re I don't know why it's uh, the reconstruction, it should be the construction theorem. Uh, maybe because if you are in the Taylor expansion setting, you already know the, the function in advance and you reconstruct it, but for a general germ, you, you, you don't supposed to have it in advance. Okay, now let me give a few kind of examples. Uh, so suppose that you have a locally finite or, or, or even a finite set if you want. Uh, so what is important is that the, the infimum is finite. So if, if it's finite, that's certainly true. And then a germ such that for some gulf, uh, gamma greater than alpha, you have this uh, property. So you can split, at least you can bound this by a sum of, of values of this form. So epsilon to the A, where A varies in capital A, times Z minus Y to the gamma minus A. Uh, if you remember, so this was true for, for uh, Taylor expansion. So, but now, in fact, this condition implies that uh, your germ is coherent with these parameters alpha and gamma. Again, because you have this small trick, so you write epsilon to the A as epsilon to the alpha, which is the minimum, times epsilon to the A minus alpha. And then you apply the usual trick, which is here, to uh, this um, product, and you so you keep epsilon to the alpha, and you obtain epsilon plus z minus z minus y to the gamma minus alpha. So in fact, Taylor expansions uh, are in this uh, class. In particular, again, we we, okay, we recover Taylor expansions. Okay, now this is 
a very important uh, example. So suppose we have a finite family, again, of germs, so that means uh, n distributions we, which depend on, on x. Now, we, here we have an assumption which, uh, will, so here I don't, I'm not assuming coherence, I, I have another assumption which is the following. So I suppose that when I test pi i at x against a, a test function phi lambda x, this is bounded by lambda to the beta i, where beta i is in uh, uh, R. Uh, so positive or negative. And uh, I suppose that there exists a matrix valued function with this uh, property. So I suppose that pi j y can be written. So it's a kind of change of, of, of basis. Uh, when I move from a point uh, y to a point x, or, or vice versa, from a point x to a point y, I have this kind of transformation, so that pi j y can be written as the sum over i of pi i x gamma i j x y. So it's very restrictive, okay, because on the left I don't have x, so uh, there is clearly some very strong uh, uh, dependence, okay, some very strong correlation between the values of pi at different points, y and x. Let's see, I assume this, I assume this, so notice that uh, monomials, classical monomials satisfy that, again, it's just the, the, the Newton uh, binomial theorem, and by the way, in that case, beta i is just, uh, so, or, or say beta j would be just the, again, the absolute value of j. So this would be an integer. But again, I want to generalize uh, uh, monomials. And uh, so uh, here I am reminding you of the properties. Now suppose we have f from rd to rn and gamma, which is greater than all the beta i, which satisfies this um, inequality for all i between 1 and n. Uh, okay, this is an a further assumption. Of course, the gammas are the same which appear in, in the pi's. Okay? So if, if I have this set of assumptions, I compute now this so I take the sum from 1 to n of pi i z f i z. So notice that pi is a distribution, but f is, is a function. So I, actually, it's a, if you fix z, it's just a real number. So I can multiply a, a pi by a real number. There's, there's no problem. And the same for this, the other term. So here what I'm doing is that I am applying this uh, formula for uh, z, pi z. I'm rewriting pi z uh, in terms of pi y, then I factorize pi, pi y, and I obtain this, uh, this expression. So why is that interesting? Because then if I define the germ as this sum from 1 to n of pi i f i, then this difference tested on phi y epsilon is equal to, you, 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 so it's the previous formula just applied to, to the test function, which is goes only on, on the pi y. This is just a, a number. And then by the, the assumptions, so this is bounded by epsilon to the beta i. This is bounded by z minus y to the gamma minus beta i. And then again, as before, I have this uh, control. So I obtain that this germ is indeed coherent with uh, exponents, so alpha, which is equal to the minimum of these beta i's, and gamma, which is uh, um, the gamma which appeared uh, in this uh, hypothesis, okay? So 
if you know what a model is and what a model distribution is, uh, you will recognize uh, uh, what, what I'm doing. Uh, okay, so any resemblance is purely non-coincidental. Uh, so this is what regularity structures uh, uh, use. So they generate uh, uh, germs, which are useful for certain uh, purposes. And uh, um, in the end, okay, you construct a distribution, which is, for example, the solution to your equation by using the, the reconstruction theorem. So uh, here I am kind of doing the same, but with as little hypothesis as possible. So I'm not defining a model because this would uh, need, oops, sorry, this would uh, require additional uh, properties and constraints. In, in, in a sense, so this is all you need to, to, do, to do that. Um, Are there any questions or comments or criticism? Yes. Join Sylvia criticizing the terminology of coherence. Uh, okay, <laughs> why? Because uh, we, we use coherence uh, ah. for, uh, in the, in also for regularity structures. Yeah, that's very true, different. yes. But, yeah. <laughs> but it's okay, it's true, but it is a different. Uh, Right uh, object, so it's not a germ anyway. It's uh, okay, uh, or you should uh, change it. Okay, <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, but again, I, I, I read that there is some. Uh, there is some book, uh, uh, some novel by Dostoevsky, where he made a, a terrible uh, mistake in, in, in Russian uh, orthography, uh, and the, 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 the typist uh, told him, "But this, this is wrong." And Dostoevsky said, um, "Leave it; doesn't matter." So uh, I don't want to compare myself to Dostoevsky, but uh, as I'm saying, uh, mistakes uh, play their role in, in what we do. So. Uh, we we can keep uh, to this uh, wrong uh, terminology and uh, yeah. So I, here I insist that uh, in some sense the the purpose with with uh, with uh, Francesco especially uh, was to lighten okay the 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 structure a, a, as much as possible to 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 distillate it and, and use only what, what is really essential. So at, at this level, you don't need uh, more, more than that. You need a, a kind of basis, so that the pies uh, are a kind of basis for a subset of germs that you, you might want to consider. Okay. So when you set, when, when uh, Ilya sets his equation, he will not, he will study germs, so however he wants to call them, um, and uh, he will not take the space of all possible germs. So this, this is too big and it's not really interesting. So what uh, Martin does and, uh, and what Ilya does and what he will explain to you is that you choose a specific uh, space of germs and you look for your solution there, okay? And these germs will be based on, on some kind of, of basis, which is your pi uh, object uh, here. I'm not telling how to construct the pi, that's unfortunately uh, not easy, but once you have the pi, uh, I mean, it's easy, again, in smooth uh, settings, but if you want space-time white noise, uh, it's relatively complicated. But once you have the pi, which satisfies this, this, and you have a f, which satisfies this, you, you are already in a good uh, situation without knowing for the moment anything more. So again, I insist that the pi's are a basis and the f uh, are the coefficients that you choose for, for your uh, 
um, germ, okay? Not just that the, its basis, but uh, uh, the F depends on X uh, as well. So it's, it's not just a linear combination of the, of the initial uh, germs. It's a linear combination of the germs, but with uh, um, coefficients which can, again, depend uh, on, the, on the point, uh, although in a way which is not too wild, okay? So the idea here is that you are changing your basis and uh, you want your coefficients to, to vary not too badly with respect to this uh, change of, uh, of basis. Okay. Um, yeah, indeed, so this discussion allows to introduce this notion of uh, homogeneity. Uh, so this was called beta i before. Now, you, you want that your distributions, because this is what they are, uh, may be diverge as lambda goes to zero when you test against uh, uh, this k-test function, but in a controlled way. Again, uniformly, uh, etc. Uh, in fact, it turns out that if you have a coherent germ, there always exists uh, such a beta, uh, which can depend on the compact set, uh, um, and uh, that, uh, so you have three parameters now, alpha, beta, and gamma, and uh, um, there is a priori no relation between alpha and beta. Uh, so this is a, another uh, wrong choice of notation because uh, in irregularity structures, if you read Martin's paper, beta is equal to alpha, at least. Okay, so in fact, um, yeah, let's say that you, you don't have this, this problem, but we should have probably called uh, this alpha and this may be eta or whatever, but uh, okay, this is again, uh, this is hopeless. Uh, but this is not, you also if you read uh, Martin's paper, so he, he changes notation uh, from a paper to the next, so uh, somewhat uh, how, w how we work. So we, we realize in the process that uh, we need to change our notations and uh, yeah, uh, these are negative Hölder spaces, so I'm not sure this is very important. Uh, I still have. 15 minutes. Yeah, I, I, I do have time to do this, but uh, let me see what comes next. Yeah, so this is maybe a little bit more interesting. So this is the proof for gamma positive. Uh, well, okay, a sketch. Now, in the assumption, we had a single test function phi uh, okay, which makes the germ coherent. Now, by um, uh, by subtracting uh, um, so the, okay, we, we can modify slightly uh, phi and obtain a phi hat, uh, which has still the same property. It's phi hat still makes the germ coherent, but additionally, uh, it has the property that it uh, integrates to zero uh, monomials between, uh, uh, of degree between one and R minus one, where R was that uh, exponent uh, of C R, if you remember, okay, anyway. You, this is a, a kind of a technical step, which is somewhat mysterious. Uh, it's also done uh, in Martin's proof, but for some reason, it was kind of mysterious to me. Uh, here it is very clear why, why one need to, to do that. We'll try to mention this uh, shortly. And then, so this is the kind of, I said, approximation that, that you define. Uh, you, you define a, a distribution which is actually uh, smooth, so a function, and the function is this one, so you compute f, the, the germ at z on a test function rho 
uh, z scaled by epsilon n, where rho is this, so this is not a square, this is the, the scaling of phi hat at level two, um, uh, convolution phi hat. So, um, do I explain? No, I don't explain much more of that, uh, unfortunately. So, it, it turns out that, then you define epsilon, sorry, which is two to the minus n. So, it turns out that this function rho uh, has nice, uh, nice properties, uh, which a kind of a discrete uh, uh, semi-group properties, uh, something like that. Uh, This I, I may have added uh, one line or two or about that. Um, anyway, I, I can I can uh, certainly try to write this on the blackboard if you want, but I need to open my uh, PSDF file then. Uh, and then what you can prove is that f n of psi converges to some distribution, and uh, that you have the uh, reconstruction bound uh, that you 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 want. Okay. Um, so how do you actually do that? Uh, okay, maybe I can uh, try to write uh, just a uh, couple of additional formally. So, in fact, uh, you, so for example, you want to, um, essentially, you will write something like this, so f plus, and fn plus one of psi minus fn of psi, okay? And uh, so you, you will bound this by several uh, terms, okay? Um, and uh, you, you want, like in the swimming uh, lemma, to obtain uh, something which, uh, which, uh, which, which converges, okay? You, you want to obtain here some uh, quantity which is summable, okay? Here the same, um, for, for the second, uh, once you have F, you will do the same. So you will write this here, lambda X uh, as uh, some sum of terms. I don't know, let's write B of N of, of lambda, whatever, something like that. Okay, and at each, uh, uh, and then you will, you have to bound uh, an and bn by by something uh, uh, useful, okay? And uh, so there are uh, a number of, of terms here we, which appear. So uh, sometimes you you end up with quantities of the form epsilon n to the gamma, and then you are happy. You see, so because. Uh, because gamma is positive, epsilon n is two to the minus n, and therefore this is summable. Uh, or sometimes you end up with uh, uh, epsilon n to the alpha, but he, then he, here you're not happy because alpha is, uh, um, is potentially negative, but actually, thanks to the, the trick you did here, you can improve uh, these bounds and have plus r, and then it, you just take r big enough, you see that uh, r plus alpha is, is positive, and, uh, and therefore this, uh, this will converge uh, uh, in the end. And, and the same is true for bn. So here, okay, you, you do a multi-scale uh, analysis, uh, uh, it is really not particularly difficult 
we have been actually uh, almost pedantic in, in the paper, checking all details on all constants, all small uh, steps, uh, and you always end up in one of the two situations, um, and then in the end you have the, the proof. So you see this heavily relies on gamma positive here, and the, the fact that uh, your distribution uh, is bad, but this will be compensated by this R and uh, this. So, um, now let me go to the case for gamma less or equal than zero. Um, in fact, it's like <laughs> for the semi lemma I, I mentioned before, but that there, you, you remember, there is a derivative. So in fact, the transition for the semi lemma is for gamma is equal to one, and if you differentiate, you lose one, and the, the tra transition for the reconstruction theorem is for gamma equal to zero. Now, suppose that gamma is, is less or equal than zero, then you can still assume uh, this coherence condition, and the result is that there is a non-unique distribution which does essentially the same job then you have lambda to the gamma if gamma is strictly negative or you have one plus log lambda if gamma is equal to zero so you, you recognize the, the, the analogy with the, the semi lemma so notice that here gamma is negative so lambda to the gamma diverges uh, potentially but this diverges in a controlled uh, way. And again, you have a unique, uh, sorry, you have a continuity statement which I am not making precise here. And uh, you know that this is non-unique, but, but you can characterize the, the, the non-uniqueness. So if you have two possible choices, the difference will have to be uh, in a base of space of exponent gamma, so, uh, sorry, uh, beta, which is not appearing here. Okay. okay. You, you can you can characterize the the non uniqueness you can you can um, yeah so what is the proof for gamma less or equal than zero of course this cannot work okay there is no way th these terms are there and there is no way to eliminate them so w what you do in fact is you change the, the definition of, of uh, your approximating uh, sequence by eliminating all terms which will be bounded by epsilon n to the gamma. You, you retain only the terms which will be bounded by epsilon n to the alpha plus r. So this may look like a cheating, but in any case, you don't expect to have a canonical or, or a unique. So you, it's enough to have one object with, which does the, the job. And it turns out that this, in this way, it works. Um, so the construction was local for gamma positive. Now it is not local anymore. Uh, it's, you get some strange integrals. Uh, yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, I don't know whether I can explain this better. Um, if you think of the same lemma, which was rather simple one, one hour ago, uh, it is really the same uh, philosophy. Uh, you have a relatively natural construction for gamma positive, and it is canonical, it is unique, in fact, the limit is unique. For gamma negative, it is neither canonical nor unique, but it is good enough, and, and you can... Uh, you can use it. Now, there is clearly an, ana an analogy between the reconstruction theorem and the semi lemma. This was Ilya's question before. Uh, in, in this paper with uh, Luca, uh, it's in, sorry, 21, no, not 20. Section five, we, we have a discussion of this. Uh, in fact, it turns out that the semi lemma seems to be stronger than the reconstruction theorem. So you. If you use the reconstruction theorem to prove the semi-lemma for any gamma, 
you get a weaker, a weaker version. Uh, okay, this is interesting, but it's somewhat uh, an anecdote, so it's like a detail. Uh, what, ah, yeah, yes, so application, product. So we said at the beginning that it's difficult to multiply um, distributions. It's also difficult to multiply a distribution by a non-smooth function, okay? But this is possible now. Uh, again, so this is the result that Ilya already quoted, so it's classical uh, in a sense, but still we have a nice proof for, for that. So you, you take a function f in a space, uh, uh, in a Hölder space with positive regularity, and you can write its Taylor polynomial, which is a germ. Now you take, okay, I didn't define base of uh, spaces, but sorry about that. Just, uh, okay, it was not so difficult. It was just this. So you, you assume that when you test against scale functions, at any point, this scales like epsilon to the alpha with alpha, which is uh, strictly negative. Okay, so this is the definition of C alpha when alpha is negative. It's a homogeneity property. Unfortunately, so base of spaces have uh, millions of different definitions. They are morally all the same for positive uh, exponents, and they are morally all different for negative exponents. So this is a joke, uh, more or less, but it's not so far from the truth. So um, we chose this definition because it is good enough for our purpose. Okay, so again, this is used in the estimates of coherence. Yeah, so now we define, we cannot, we don't know how to define the product be between F and G because, because they are not, uh, G is a distribution, but F is not uh, smooth. But then we can define this germ uh, because now capital F is given by smooth functions. So we, we know how to multiply a distribution by a smooth function with respect to W, okay? So X is fixed. It's just this. And then theorem, this jerk is beta comma alpha plus beta coherent. So uh, namely you have this uh, simple estimate. So if alpha plus beta is, is unique, uh, sorry, is positive, where is it? If alpha plus beta is positive, then we apply the positive uh, regularity uh, reconstruction theorem. We have a, new, a unique reconstruction, which we can call the, the product between F and G. If alpha, and this is classical, if alpha plus beta is less or equal than zero, then the distribution RP is not unique, but can still be constructed with the, the, the negative uh, part of the reconstruction theorem, and you have a notion of product of F and G. And you know uh, also to which uh, basis space it, it belongs. I don't really know how useful this is, but uh, it is nice. It's certainly useful for alpha plus beta positive. Yeah, and then uh, in the last uh, minute, so let me say that there have been uh, several, so the paper with Francesco is uh, just one, one year, one year and a half uh, old, uh, and uh, since then there have been already a few uh, developments. So there is a version on smooth manifolds of the same uh, theorem. Uh, there is, uh, okay, a micro-local version of uh, this uh, young uh, product theorem, so the, the, what I just uh, described. So uh, Luca Brewer and David Lee, who are here, um, did uh, so the base of version of the reconstruction. So, uh, okay, that means in a more general setting, uh, very similar uh, the result is contained in this paper by Pavel uh, Zorin Kranich, which is unusually uh, short. So he really has a very extremely compact 
proof of, 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 uh, of the result. And then, so the stochastic semi lemma uh, also has a version in the reconstruction theorem setting. So Hannes Kern has proved a stochastic reconstruction theorem. Okay, so this was my last slide, and uh, I thank you for your attention. Yes. We can't like step out a piece like a little integral st and then do it and then do it and then like have this. I'm thinking of like the extension here of the two plus parts. Because the gamma positive is or gamma bigger than one, you know, it's, it's local. You just need to know you know the function of it. Um, what if you apply it you can apply the your theorem on every integral I guess you get it's not, uh, it's not compatible at, at the subdivision somehow. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm saying uh, I, don't uh, I see the question. I'm, I'm tired. Uh, <laughs> so I, I'll try to give you an answer after lunch. Uh, I, I see what you mean. And do we have a bit more question? I don't know if that's a good question. Um, for the stochastic reconstruction theorem, do you follow like a similar spirit like you do with regress and so on, or is it like a, a completely different framework? No, actually, uh, I, I, I don't know. So I didn't have time yet to, to really read the paper in detail. So you should ask uh, on the scan. <laughs> I'll certainly try to read it. Uh, maybe after this course.